Ready? Oh my god, dude! All right. <clears throat> we went to the computer. We went to the computer. I got the I got the mic inside here. Is that gonna I think they intentionally this is gonna be awesome. Yeah, I was definitely doing something before and now I'm doing this. I want to do a bunch of different stuff at the same time. We're gonna do. We're gonna do. We aren't doing shit. I. Mind the tie. I do something shabby. It's all the same thing. Don't don't listen to anyone. No one listen to anyone. Out anything. Around, about, along, among. <sighs> Outside. Uh, on, down, during, between, below, behind. See, I don't like that because we can see it. I want to be stealthy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. None of this matters. It does not matter. All right. We're going to do a larger version. I'm going to tie <clears throat> a larger version of... This is going to kill me. How about... Can we just put it down there? I think we can do that. We're gonna tie a larger version of that got a little creepy there. The crafty crafty something. Ah. Alright, so fish skull head. Um, you know, use whatever you want. Cone head'll work. I have one, the, the number of flymen things that I have are dwindling, um, which is intentional. Sounds like whoever the owner is there, jacked around, not in the fun way, jacked around with Blaine, with Chase, with other people that... Look, man, I don't have a pattern. Um, or materials, or anything like that. So these things have... They're, they're keeled. Which is one of the reasons I like... I'm sure um, Spawn Flyfish and some other... Companies make these things. Um, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get one that or a hook that that Yamagatsu B10S size two. I could be able to do it in size one, but that's a lot of metal. Do I have a size one? I bet you I do. Yeah, so the size one, uh, Daiichi 2461. That's not bueno. We are off to a ripping start. I'm just going to put this back on since uh, we're going to go. We're going to go over here and I'm just going to leave that. Here's some crap for searching. Searching, we have um, some CS86X. I certainly don't mind those. 
Some three odds, some size eights. Uh, I kind of want one, six, three, six, X, size two. Hmm. Trout predator, size one, might be the trick. Want something with long enough for shame. Where even on that fish skull doesn't completely wash everything that's on the hook because when you put it on, it kind of compresses shit back. Um, and then you also want to have enough of a space for a decent thread bump because that's how these jabbers get on here. This just might be too big. Should I accept defeat? Hmm. He's considering it. He's considering accepting that this isn't. He's going to do it anyways. Yeah, all right, which means back hook. So front to back, wanted to get one that made made sense. Uh, I might end up going with that size two. Hamagatsu B10S. Uh, um, let's but man, the stinger, or the whatever, the rear hook for the Browns. It becomes important because they they really they slash. Is it slash? It's not slash and grab. I had a little wire thingy to deal with stuck thread. Normally, you can just hit the crack pipe. As my buddy Logan says, here it is. This is just a uh, ultra wire in brassy, kind of made. You have the Bodkin threaders that, you know, you're gonna destroy them, so. When those break, There's some junk stuck in there, mostly wax. Nope. Do I have a captivated audience yet? I feel like at this point, some might think, oh, well, folks are going to tune out. Nah, this is where you go, oh, is he going to get it? He got it. He got it. He's doing it. He used to say that in landscaping. You're doing it. All right, we're back. We're back to this. I might put it down on the table again. Let me just do what I want. You're doing it. That was just, uh, <laughs> scissors aren't sharp anymore. Um, kind of a euphemism or a, just a way to make something miserable that you're doing seem less miserable. Now, uh, free taper, Marabou. And having talked with Aaron Root, Tough Drift on on Instagram. All right, we're going to put this shit down. Who had mentioned, I don't, I don't listen to or watch these things. I need a haircut, by the way, uh, before they go up. So I say a bunch of stuff and then sort of forget about it. Um, but I do want to highlight a couple things. And I've said it before that, you know, with 
as much as I can disagree with the jerk strip, um, Kelly's videos and just the way he speaks his mind in those, you know, hour and 20 minute, tying a 20 minute fly. Um, I think if you're, if you're naturally predisposed to enjoying this stuff, you also probably like making cat toys and necklaces. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're naturally, if, if you're going to find this, I somewhat strongly believe that you'll get there, but yeah, his videos and just talking about all the little things within his thought process and the tangents and all that stuff. It's just, it, it added an element that quite frankly, I was also eesh, pretty lonely and, and pretty unhappy. And so it was a, it was a cool, you know, a little bit of distraction here. So um, we'll get into the mess uh, that is the inside of my brain, or or at least, you know, I try to make it less messy day by day. Um, each one of these tendrils, five, five, each one of these bird hairs goes from fat to skinny, and w with the bird, unlike bucktail, it's like, and even with bucktail, it's, it's, it's easy to see when you have a clump, right? It goes from fat to skinny. That's like the actual mass itself with the bird hair, the bird hairs, the hair of the bird. That's what my grandpappy's pappy would always say. It goes from having longer little mini things to so e each one is tapered in and of itself and then um they they get the collective group of them gets thinner this is one where i kind of referred to that sometimes you end up getting like a flat back which at the end of the day it's still tapered because each one of them does get thinner and thinner so just even when you do have this flat edge it does end up in the water being a taper because each one of those flat pieces is progressively thinner. Um, now, if I hadn't lost you on deleting camera or, or deleting pictures from my camera, then you are gone now. Another little thing. So a bunch of this is going to be probably repeated from some of Kelly's stuff, maybe some of Gunner's um, for anyone new, like I've Josh Farner, um, my boy with the Maine Coon, Paul Monahan. There's there's so many different little things that make your life easier. And with Marabou, just um, first of all, washing and conditioning, just like hair, is you don't end up with the that kind of filmy, bleachy residue. Um, and and that I just dunked it in water so that we're actually tying with something that will not expand and loosen. Um, I do it with craft for two just to sort of contain things as I'm tying down, which is fitting since we're going to be doing some craft for stuff. Now, today's craft. I have to think, you know, whenever I, I talk with people, I'm just going to grab some flashaboo. Well, I think we're going to do a lot. I like copper, generally speaking. Um, whenever I talk with people who are like either into things or who work in a very unique, like if you're good at what you do and it's, it's somewhat unique, it's, it's not, I mean, fuck, even, even the less unique jobs or whatever. Um, I had a guy, shout out Steven who I believe works in accounting and it's just the, I, I worked in healthcare consulting and um, some of that doesn't really matter what industry you're doing data analytics. There's, there's a lot of crossover there. And it's, if, if someone's smart and they do well at whatever it is that they're doing um, or, or I don't even know if smart, if they're just, if they're a capable person and 
they like what they do or they're good at what they do or some combination of it. It's fascinating to listen to some of the details because, I mean, I, I just being as in the weeds, there's a, not really a consulting phrase, but it feels like it. As I was, now we're going off the side here because that's just what we're doing. Um, I feel like if I take the top of that, I'm going to ruin it and I can make a nice little mini dungeon out of that. Another gallop thing, sort of doing flash in the middle. That, this one, I think I qualify as habitual. Um, I will do, you know, big pieces of flash on top for like the the tan or, you know, taupe. Things that are going to blend in, light grays that um, we won't be seeing the fly color as much, especially in off. Like a dark tan disappears. A light tan really stands out. So for the disappearing ones, I'll put a big pop of pop of flash and you know not not the clear opalescent. I want to have you know the copper, the the silver holographic. These block light. They they reflect light and they don't need something on the other side of it. Um, and I want to get. I want to track this thing. I want you to track this thing. So I think the back is going to be mostly white. This is just going to be craft fur. Yeah, we're going to do... Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know I've said this before, but I, I lost. Great client. Um, I didn't lose the client. Just very briefly, you know, we're sneaking it up under. He is getting sneaky with his cast because some days they're just, rounds aren't out chasing. You got to get under the shit. Um, and, you know, he had a couple casts where I was just like, ooh. Yeah, dude, that's, you know, they're going to like it. Of course, my brain starts going in a bunch of different directions, some of which are less suitable for work, I guess. Um, now, tying in chenille, right, if I tie this in and, and wrap, it's, it's now going to, that, that flash is going to come back here. And then the bottom is also going to be all up over. I'm not going to re, I'm not going to unwrap. Okay. Just do what I say and what I do. Um, so I'm actually going to start it down here. I think I had a, I still remember this moment. Being on the tog. And I had a, um, Jesus, how is this not picking up? But up, up, up. Okay, hold please. We're gonna have some background noise in that one. Oh, show. Mo money, mo problems.
Okay, we are falling apart at the seams. And... When that does start happening, the best thing to do... is panic. Okay, now we're cooking with gas. Now we're cooking with gas. Okay. Got it. We are back harder than ever. Um, okay, before I rudely interrupted myself, and you, really, um, yeah, I was on the TOG, and I was, I was fishing an articulated Creelex that I was very pleased with. I was, I was a very happy little boy with myself. I said, this is a cool fly, and... Um, I will gain many friends and ultimately happiness and vast sums of wealth. And it just sucked because I had tied it a little too dense. You know, that's lesson learned, uh, not necessarily right then. But what I did discover at that point was my my chenille and some of my material was it just wrapped it too close to the hook bend so it was it was wrapping around the hook bend and sort of creating like a little rudder down there and so you you will see me do this on um especially on changers you know this guy Yeah, I've gone in here and and kind of chopped up like right in there and then really just made sure that the fibers don't extend too much past that bend. And I haven't fished this one yet, so we're going to wait and see. Keel is going to be less of an issue with the big dumbbell eyes there, but. Does saying I digress even make sense at this point? All right. Relatively simple fly, ladies and gentlemen. Lady. The <laughs> I put up... I can't remember the last video. Um, last time video. Last me talking. But... Um, over the summer, caught a 50-incher muskie and big fucking 
50 inch trout. These tailwaters, man, I'll tell you what. Caught a 50 inch muskie and put it up um, on Instagram. And, and I have, uh, this is Craffer. We're just going to go just a little bit past the bend. I'm, I might end up redoing this, but we shall see, Shank, shan't we? So when I put something up on Instagram, I also put it up on Facebook. Just, I have the, the option, and I, I, you know, select yes and do it automatically to, to post to Facebook at the same time. And I rarely check. I'm sorry if you've ever messaged me on Facebook or done anything related to anything. Um, it's not that I don't like you. I might. I might not like you. Our personalities might just be so vastly different that you and I will never be friends and won't enjoy any time together. Odds are I'm pretty flexible and I like people. So um, I like people. There's an asterisk there, but whatever. Cross that bridge when we get there. I just don't check it. And so, you know, there's there's millions of views on this thing. It's, it's me lifting the muskie up and, I don't know, cut to the tape. Bro. What a fucking fish, dude. What a fucking fish. And the comments are, <laughs> you're not supposed to read comments, right? Um, that's how you know you're getting big time. Let that marinate for a second. I get it. Um, I think I think it was way worse, you know, a couple years ago when... It just every you know the the opinions of others really did. I didn't have as much confidence. I mean, not not just tying and um, and guiding, but just as a as a person. I was kind of still traversing life, and will keep doing that. Never mind. I'm insecure. Wait, no, I'm secure. Delete that last part. I was moving here, you know, I had a young kid, a lot of days I didn't have enough sleep. I just, um, I wasn't fully, fully feeling myself all the time. And so, you know, you, you get, you get a sideways comment here or there and some of them hurt and it's just people in their garage or basement or, um, or whatever projecting their own unhappiness onto others um, because the ones who are, are generated, this is something that I had realized, um, gosh, I feel like it was a Cal Scrooby song, but also some other, I want to say it was a rapper. I feel like it was a white rapper. That's why I said Cal Scrooby. Like the difference between maybe it was N F and not M F Doom. The difference between the people who are successful in whatever, and you know, this specific to rap, and those who are not, is that there and this person was just observing that um the successful ones would just every once in a while getting some off color remarks. <sighs> some folks saying this or that. And um yeah, it used to it used to impact me a little more than it does now. And um so I, I I'm looking at the 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 Facebook version, right? Because there's the Instagram and then there's the, the Facebook. And the Facebook version is hysterical. Um, 
1.5 million views and and the the amount of upset the amount of feelings that weren't positive because of um what what surprise I get I get it you you know I pick pick up a fish out of water I'm going to get hate for that um it's a 50 inch muskie that's not 50 inch all right um, I'm cool with all that. I don't need to defend that stuff. Um, and primarily it's just because of you fine folks out there, the ones who have found me and, and fished with me. And um, I don't have to prove myself to the internet. And that, God, that took a long time. You know what it was? It was proving myself to myself. That's not actually a joke. See, this feels like it's going to end up being too much. We're, yeah, we're just going to go with the conehead. Damn. No. No, we're not. We're going to do a big hook. I wanted to do a bigger fly that would cast easy and sink and was somewhat simple. Here we are. The Daiichi 2461, 3i. New threads courtesy of Walmart. It's a nice shirt for 14 bucks. I mean, it's a nice shirt, period. But yeah, the thing that really um, made me say, whoa, this is just a fascinating world that we live in, which I, I say to myself somewhat constantly these days, um, was the number of the amount of hurt feelings and, and the number of, of feelings that were hurt because I used a swear word. Um, there's so many levels to this, right? Like, obviously you don't fish for musky if you're concerned about the use of a swear word. Um, I'm sorry if you have fished for musky before and also you don't like swearing, you don't routinely fish for musky and care about the use of a swear word. That's, it's just... It's just not how musky fishing goes. Um, it's too depressing. It's too dark. The people are the, the anglers, the the ones who really love musky fishing and, and muskies and, and conserving and the great outdoors. They're all just too deeply wounded, uh, unhappy permanently unsatisfied with life, but realistically themselves um, to be concerned with the use of profanity. And, and so seeing this was, I wouldn't say shocking because it's whatever it's comments. It's just that it really took hold and there's, you know, there's this, I, I don't, have a bunch of experience in having videos with that many views. And so it was, we're going to do a feed. That's 40 pound wire, ladies and gentlemen, lady and gentlemen. Um, I'll get to why that connected some things for me. It's, it became, I mean, there's implications for free speech and, and then there's, you know, there's people, um, recognizing that either there's sensitive feelings or gosh, I feel like it's just, I mean, you have to almost be making that up um, to have an algorithm that exposes you 
We're going to do two beads. I want that back one dangling a little bit more. To have an algorithm that exposes you to uh, someone lifting up a musky and, and to be so offended by the use of profanity in the video where I said, what a fucking fish. That's, that was the extent of the profanity. Um, and to be so offended as to write, a, a, you know, I would say a comment um, to explain yourself. That's really what it is. It just, uh, like, what? I want to know what type of person that is, you know? Where does that, what else, did, what else are they watching? Is it just, are the algorithms and, and the ability to track and, and get engagement with people so good that all they watch are video, like short videos where at the end someone says one word and it just enrages them and so they stay on Facebook for the next six hours just ranting about the use of profanity? Um... I mean, good business model, right? I'm not saying that's the case, but maybe it is. It's not. Maybe it is. And I got there from something. Comments. We'll get there. We'll get back there. We'll get back to how I got there. We'll get to where, how I got there. Makes some amount of sense. And in the meantime, two six, six millimeter beads. I like the, so 40 pound wire. Um, after you snag this on logs and you're fishing, you know, musky flies and doing gnarly shit, um, that 40 pounds, I have a changer in the car that just I can't use anymore because if, if a big fish eats that back hook, it's it's only on one. Not a huge deal until you start getting rolls and logs and just it's the moment that you don't want anything bad to happen. And um, Aaron actually noticed it. Um, so so 40 pound wire, I, I double over it for the muskies and it's, you know, what do you, you have to pick your poison at some point. With trout, striper, 40 pound is, it's fine. Um, with the four, I could probably use the 25, but I just, I'm in the trees too much. And, I, and there is a, there was a, I started using 25 for like, I don't know, maybe a dozen flies. And with most of my flies, uh, they're gone or the eyes break off, like for the dungeons. That's the back half of a dungeon, somewhat pointless that I'm showing you this. It's a woolly bugger, the back half of a insert articulated streamer name. Um, there was a massive increase in number of flies that broke when I went to the 25. Oh, you know why? You know why maximum recording size? All right, hold please again. But I'm taking the audio with me just for editing simplicity. I had this, had my fancy camera out. Um, and I party and you can too. If I were going to run for office, which isn't out of the question, a lot of people have been asking me. So, it's anything like, Ellis, how do you keep your hands so soft? Let's see. Let me tell you about that. Um, yeah, musky fishing and some other stuff. Book a trip for musky fishing. Come pound some fucking muskies with me. Um, we, Aaron moved a dinosaur. That was the first trip since Helene. It was really cool to see that, um, all of the musky homes are, st I mean, logs, 
individual logs that are like out in the middle of the stream. Here, this is what I'm doing off camera. I'm doing this. And I'm using hairline extra select. Um, I like, I like it. I like it. Individual logs. It, by the way, that thing that I was saying we're going to get back to, I'll get back there. I'm not going to. It's permanently gone forever. Um, individual logs, like hanging out in the middle of a stream type musky homes, are, are still there after Helene, which was just the amount of water relative to normal levels and even relative to like big flood stages in my five years here. Um, it was, it is just fucking insane. Period. That it even happened. And for these logs to still be there, it's at the end of the day, guess what? It makes sense. They've been there that long because there are the right hydrodynamics for them to have current breaks. And like we're moving musky in the same places where they've been before. And it's like, yeah, there's a ripping river around you, but if those logs haven't moved, then guess what? We're good. We, meaning um, people who want to stab musky in the face with metal. Hold them up. Um, ideally profit. That's what my life boils down to is, is the, I profit from the, <laughs> I only make money if animals get hurt. I profit from um, the suffering and destruction of wildlife. Which is something that I think about Every night I go to bed, I think about, am I okay with profiting only if wildlife? That's actually not true because sometimes we don't catch fish and I still make money, which is, so which, which one's better? Um, this, the business model being completely upside down, guiding for musky is one of the most wild things. It, it is I'm going to try to not get on a soapbox here, but I'm about to. To be a fishing guide, there are different descriptions for what that means. And if you float down the river with people who don't really fish that much and you help them to catch fish, I am not at all saying that is easy. I am not saying that you are not a guide. I'm just saying that that is different. Um, I do that. I do that with people who don't fish and just who find me because I'm near the South Holston and I say, yes, um, I'm shallow and I want money and it doesn't matter how I get it. And even though I don't typically do this, I will do it for you because you're paying me to do it because I am a whore. And it's okay. Kids got to eat, right? Two kids now. Baby boy just came 12 days ago. Being a musky, guiding for musky, being a musky guide. And, and oftentimes with, with the Browns, where um, I'm not just going, you know... There are dams here in East Tennessee that you can go up to the bottom of and fish and there, there will be big fish. I, I don't enjoy doing that because I'd rather, honestly, I'd rather go to a Creek wade fishing in nymph. I, I think that there's more actual like fishing involved in doing that than just going below, like doing the same thing over and over again and hoping that something changes. Even though, as I say that, it's exactly what we do when we're streamer fishing. For browns, I just do it on a river from a drift boat um, or a jet. But we're going up. We're checking spots. Um, and, you know, we're floating 
10, 12, 13 miles. It's, I feel like cheerleader is not the right word, but maybe hype man is closer. You, you have to start keeping people engaged because, and there, there's two separate, we're going to finish this fly before I'm done with my thoughts, which I don't know in which direction that is alarming, but it is. Um, there, there's two directions. Everyone relax. Everyone relax. We're, we're resuming. We are resetting. And now we have greatness. This is how sausage is made. We're showing you the biscuits too. Shall we recenter? Is that is that good enough for you? I promise it's going to be okay. It might not be, but you'll be fine. You won't be. Um, right, so you have to... First of all, you, yourself, you, you have to be, <laughs> like, okay. You, you can't be, you know, going back to that getting pissy with internet comments. You can't be this, I need, we need a muskie um, in order for me to be okay. That, first of all, the fish know that, and so they're not going to show up. Um, and I'm stealing this from John Irwin, who was quoting a uh, guide from the Bahamas for bonefish, I think. I, it's probably ill-advised for me to be doing an impression of John Irwin, who, by the way, great guy in Charleston, go fish with him, um, of John doing an impression of someone from the Bahamas. But they're, they're like, maybe it's permanent. They're like women. You, you have to act like you're not, like you don't care. And, and otherwise, they know. They know how much it means, and then nothing good is going to happen. I think we're going to do like a mini little reverse. We need more craft fur. So you yourself, you, you have to, as the guy, you, you have to have it together. You, you got to be able to be in a good mood for, for eight plus hours. And it's not just being in a good mood for eight plus hours. People, yeah, yeah you're, you're outside doing what you love. Well, oftentimes I'm trying to keep someone's shit together because um, it's, it's kind of like with, with infants how, and not really infants, more like one-year-olds, how they're mobile enough to where it's it's like their it's kind of like their fishing outweighs their catching ability, where they are able to get around and do things, um, but they don't n understand what they're doing, and so everything is going to kill them, or they're going to find a way pretty quickly to ensure that that is the case. And so with with musky anglers, it's just I get it. Everyone works. You have jobs. You're not a guide. Um, in, in, if you haven't fully dedicated yourself to it, which is so alarmingly hard to do, um, you're, you're going to encounter doubt. You're going to encounter just like, what the fuck am I doing? And 
dude, your guide has got to be able to keep it together because that's it. I mean, if you, once you start going down that road, man, first of all, as you're saying, as you're looking up to complain about something and, and say, man, when are the, that is when your guide is going to look down. That's when I will look down and say, there's a massive musky and it's gone. So you just, you have to keep it together. And, and one part of keeping it together is everyone learns a little differently. And so you, you can't just say, you know, make sure you figure eight on everyone. And then the next cast, make, make sure you figure eight. And then the next cast, make sure you figure eight. If someone's not doing it, you got to figure out on the fly how to teach because everyone learns a little differently and they, they, there are very minor and subtle things that can shift. Dip that tip. That's one that seems to work. But just like all of this hygiene stuff. Um, and, and by that, I mean, you know, good. Here's some consulting isms, best practices um, that, that used to make me angry. I would, I would feel hatred and um, and I would hate the people who used it. I would think that my opinion of them would go from, oh, I kind of like them. And then they would say, what are some best practices? And I would immediately stop listening and go, I now hate this person. I hate how they grew up. I hate their parents. Um, they probably aren't good at buying presents for other people because they only think about themselves. And so their presents are junk because they either don't spend the time or money for good presents or what they get is just something they want because they expect everyone else to want the same things they want. And that's not how life works. But these best practices don't occur when... A 48 and a half inch muskie is right behind your fly. They're built up and you, you have to think about it. You have to think about it when it's not happening. You say, what, what am I going to do if one eats? What am I going to do if one eats? What am I going to do if one eats? What am I going to do if one eats? What am I going to do if one eats? What am I going to do if one eats? What am I going to do if one eats throughout your retrieve? And then when you start going into your figure eight, what am I, I mean, I spent, Jesus, I, it would be, there's no way of measuring this, but the amount of time that I spent just on my boat, first of all, learning how to, learning new rivers and musky with a fly rod from a drift boat is like, I, I think I learned more about myself during that period of time. Um, sorry, Aaron, for the repeat from our trip, but I, I think about that routinely. I don't want to say it's stupid, but oof, it, depending on what the goal was, right? If the goal was to find out where musky are, that's an inefficient way of approaching that goal. What am I going to do if one eats? What am I going to do if one eats? Right, like in the transition in between your retrieve and your figure eight. I, I spent so long just figuring out like the best way to, to, so the best way to do that is to stop effing thinking about it at that transition time and just start figure eighting and keep your damn fly in the water. And if you can't get a good strip set on them, use that rod to set down. If, if my beat up hand is the musky, if this is its nose, and it eats right at the boat, set that way. Hard as, try to break the fucking rod is how hard you want to set. Um, but the, God, the amount of time that... And so when you're watching someone else go through this, either they're new to musky fishing or they've done it and they, maybe they've had, I don't call it luck, but um, they've caught muskies before. I think I want some longer fibers trailing over that. Yep, I do. Yes, sir. Um, 
Part of that is opacity. I'm a strong believer in brown trout. I've seen something that has the profile of a fish, and if something is blocking light, I strongly believe that its ability to present a profile is stronger than something that is not blocking light. What am I going to do if a fish eats now? Let it eat, first of all. What am I going to do? Let it eat. What am I going to do if I get a follow? So doing all that stuff, going through that that mental, I don't know what you want to call it, but just it's almost like going to the gym. You just continue to train yourself. What am I going to do if a fish eats now? What am I going to do if a fish eats now? What am I going to do if a fish, a fish eats now? And then a fish eats, and you've replayed it in your head so many times, even if it's different than what you expected. You've replayed it in your head so many times that there isn't this moment of, oh my fucking God, there is a four foot fish at my feet and it is so much stronger than anything I've ever encountered, probably period, but definitely with a fly rod. There isn't any of that. If you just, it's it's not like you have to, I mean, you're going to obsess about it. It's going to be a problem. Family's going to leave you, but you don't have to like completely dedicate yourself in, in some life altering way. Um, but when you're out fishing, think about it. Think about what am I going to do with fish eats now? What am I going to do with fish eats now? And yeah, as the guy, it's like you, you take on this role of kind of hype man, kind of tutor, kind of teacher, kind of friend, kind of dude, get your shit together, please. And then, um, a giant fish shows itself and it doesn't matter what's happened. Um, because all those best practices and everything that you've worked on goes completely out the window. They blow it. Your career takes another year to lift off. And um, you're here with a microphone and, and a bacon neck shirt from Walmart, tying trout flies. This thing's pretty cool, though. Now, I'd like to end there, but... I am going to do some GSP, um, and that's because it's strong enough and slippery enough to slide down that hook eye and really mash that thing. There we go. There we all. Shout out hooks with eyes that aren't perfectly closed. It's a process. They're bent. They're not actually welded ovals. So that that happens. There we go. A little super glue. I think I'm happy. You don't. You want enough of a thread dam to where that thing's not going to slide off. That's why I had a bunch of insecurity around hook selection at first because I knew, I didn't know. I just, I saw this, um, I saw that fish skull pre, pre-eyed and I thought, I'm going to tie it fly with that. What if I do a fish eats now? What do I do if a fish eats now? What do I do if a fish eats now? What do I do if a fish eats now? What do I do if a fish eats now? What do I do if a fish eats now? Have you guys seen my fuck? See y'all soon, I think. I'll see some of you, I'll see two of you 
uh, in the next couple months. Hey, book your trip for January and February and feed trout these things with me. Pay to hurt animals. <laughs>